Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. As we know, we've had a rise in the glorification of serial killers, which shows like Netflix's Dahmer series. And Netflix also had a series about Ted Bundy. Now, I haven't watched the Ted Bundy series yet, but I did watch the Jeffrey Dahmer series because that took place in my era. And when I was a kid, we didn't understand the nuances of the Jeffrey Dahmer case, but just the fact that there was this cannibal one state over eating people still gives me nightmares to this day. So if you guys do not know, back on November 13th at the University of Idaho, Four students were brutally killed. And those students' names were Kaylee Gonclaves, age 21, Madison Mogan, age 21, Ethan Champin, age 20, and Zaina Zernoodle, age 20. They were all fatally stabbed in their off-campus apartment. There were also two other roommates there, but by the grace of God, they were not attacked and they were the only two survivors of this vicious crime. So this situation went viral. I mean, it was all over the media. You could not escape the Idaho Four campus slayings. And so people were really scared. You know, students went back home. This was around the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, Some people, you know, unrolled from the school. And so the hunt for the killer of these four people had been ongoing. A lot of folks were talking about this situation also in the true crime community. Let me go ahead and play you guys these news clips. Go ahead and there check. Plenty this. of questions and very few answers after four students at the University of Idaho were found murdered in their off-campus house. Authorities are calling it a crime of passion. Here's Stephen Fabian. It's the chilling last photo of four University of Idaho students taken just hours before they were found murdered. They were identified as freshman Ethan Champet, his girlfriend Zana Kernodal, Kaylee Gonzalez, and Madison Mogan. It's being called a crime of passion. The killer or killers used an edged weapon such as a knife police just revealed. I spoke with Kaylee Gonzalez's sister, Olivia, who described the last night of the students' lives. My sisters did everything right. They went out in the buddy system. They went out together. They Ubered out. They stopped and got food. They Ubered home. They let their dog out to go potty. And then they locked their house up. They did everything right. And this still happened. Only when I I Social media videos show Kaylee as a fun-loving, vibrant young lady enjoying campus life with her sorority sisters inside the six-bedroom off-campus house where the murders took place. They were murdered between 3 and 4 a.m. Sunday, and their bodies were found later that morning. The medical examiner has reportedly ruled out a murder-suicide, but even with a killer still out there on the loose, authorities say there's no risk to the other students on campus, and that's all adding to the mystery of these tragic deaths. Many of the university's 12,000 students are scared and leaving early for the Thanksgiving break. The family of Kaylee Gonzalez pleaded with students in a statement. We urge you to refrain from spreading harmful rumors that aren't based in actuality. Misinformation is unfair to everyone involved. We're mad. Um, We're really mad. We know that there is someone who is responsible for this. We know that there's someone who saw something Um, And no one's talking. We're not getting any answers and we're not going to settle for that. Back to the news at four. It's been five days since four University of Idaho students were found dead inside their home just off campus. And still very little details have been released about what happened that night. But here's what we know as of this afternoon. On Sunday, just before noon, someone called 911 to report an unconscious person at a home on King Road in Moscow. That's where police found the four victims, Ethan Chapin, Zana Kernodal, Madison Mogan, and Kaylee Gonsalves. We know there were two other roommates in the home at the time of the murders, and when police got there, they were not hurt, and police say they are cooperating. Moscow police wouldn't go so far, though, as to call them witnesses, and yesterday the coroner's office released the autopsies and found 
All four were stabbed to death with a knife early Sunday morning. Police have not found a suspect or suspects and don't have any people of interest right now. An investigative reporter, Morgan Romero, joins us live here on the News at 4. Morgan, I know you've been digging into this. What have you learned? Yeah, we did learn today, Shira, that the Latah County Coroner believes it's likely that at least some of the four victims were asleep at the time. She wouldn't specify which of the four victims. We also know that this happened in the early morning hours of Sunday. That is confirmed. The coroner tells 7 Investigates bed sheets were taken from the home for testing, but she couldn't speak to any defensive wounds or the specific time of death on Sunday morning. Police put out a clearer picture of the hours leading up to the attack. They released a timeline and the locations of where all four victims were before they were murdered at their home on King Road in Moscow. This horrific attack on four college students happened less than a mile from the University of Idaho campus. Sororities and fraternities and their out of houses are mostly centralized in this area. New information from Idaho State Police reveals two of the victims, Ethan Chapin and Zana Kronodal, were together Saturday night, November 12th. They went to a Sigma Chi fraternity party across from their home on King Road from 8 to 9 p.m. The other two victims, Kaylee Gonsalves and Madison Mogan, were at the Corner Club on Main Street. It's about a mile and a half away from the home on King Road. Police say they were there from around 10 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. After leaving the bar, the girls went to the grub truck just down Main Street from the Corner Club. It's about a six-minute walk. They're seen in a video from the food truck, ordering food around 1.40 Sunday morning. U of I students tell us it's a common weekend routine to go from the Corner Club to the food truck. Idaho State Police says all four victims were back at the King Road house, a little more than a mile from the food truck, by 1.45 a.m. Sunday, November 13th. What unfolded after that is unclear. It wasn't until noon on Sunday police received a call of an unconscious person. When they got to the home on King Road, they found the four victims, Ethan, Zanna, Kaylee, and Maddie, dead. They confirm all four were stabbed early Sunday morning. The Latah County coroner tells us all the victims could have been killed with the same knife or a very similar knife. Police say they haven't yet found the weapon. And during the only and first news conference held earlier this week, reporters asked Moscow police about that video from the food truck that I mentioned. It's circulating all over social media. Moscow Police Chief James Fry says this Twitch video is helping give them the time and space of where Maddie and Kaylee were leading up to their deaths. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. In this live stream from the grub truck, you see the girls walk into the frame and up to the food truck. It appears they're with a young man, the one in the hat and dark jacket. Here, you can see him put his hood on. He hangs back several feet behind the girls as they order from the food truck. He then follows Kaylee and Maddie after they order and stands right next to them. It looks like he never ordered any food, but you can see him talking to other people there. Several minutes later, the girls grab their food, take a picture, laugh and talk to each other, and quickly walk away. One of the people the young man is talking to points out that the girls left. He throws up his hand, waits a moment, and then appears to walk after them. You see him wave at the girls and then walk a separate direction. This recording shows all three are at the food truck for about 10 minutes. And police say Kaylee and Madison were home just minutes later by about 1.45. Their home is a little more than a mile from the grub truck. A University of Idaho student who says he's friends with the victims told us this young man was with the girls at the corner club before this. ISP says authorities contacted the young man in the video and they interviewed him as part of the investigation. They are not labeling him as a suspect or person of interest at this time. Again, police say they have not identified a person or persons of interest or a suspect in this investigation. But anyone near these areas who saw anything suspicious has surveillance video or can provide any critical information about this and can help the investigation is really asked to call the tip line. That number is there on your screen, 208-883-7180. You can also now email that email address on your screen, tipline at ci.mosco.id.us. Yeah, that really painted a better, clearer picture yeah. for a lot of us. But I know still so many questions out there, and yeah. I know you'll stay on top of it as well. We're continuing well. to stay on top of it. We've got to All right, so you guys just saw those videos. So now, if you do not know, as of yesterday, Friday, December 30th, the killer was captured. The killer was Brian Kopenberger, so he has been arrested. This entire situation is crazy. I want you guys to go ahead and watch his arrest video. Check this out. Bring an Action News reporter Andy McCormick live at DeSales University in Center Valley, Pennsylvania tonight. Andy, that's where the suspect recently got a master's degree. His field of study there now seems an eerie one. 
Yeah, Brian, that's right. He completed his undergraduate studies here at DeSales University in 2020, and then he received his master's in criminal justice here just this year. DeSales University releasing a statement today about former student 28-year-old Brian Koberger seen here graduating with a Master of Arts in Criminal Justice. Koberger was arrested this morning on four first-degree murder charges for the stabbing deaths of four Idaho University students as they slept in their beds on November 13th. DeSales University acknowledging the arrest and his affiliation with the university as an undergrad graduating in 20. 20 and a graduate student completing his degree in June 2022. His name is listed here in the 2022 commencement program. DeSales saying this in part in a statement, quote, as a Catholic Salesian community, we are devastated by the senseless tragedy. Our thoughts and prayers are with the victims' families during this difficult time. Sources tell ABC News investigators are looking at this Reddit post, actively recruiting criminals as part of a school study to understand the psychology of those who commit crimes. It was written by a user named Brian Koberger and linked to a survey of detailed questions. And the small community around the Catholic Liberal Arts School also reacting that a possible brutal killer was walking amongst them. It's definitely a little scary and it's spooky to think about someone in the community being here for years and just having no idea. We both of us have definitely spent a decent amount of time on the DeSales campus. We run there all the time. Um, yeah, it's just really weird to think about, you know. And Brian, according to authorities, he was actually continuing his studies at a school that was not far from the crime scene where those Idaho students were killed. As for DeSales University, they have sent out an email to all students and faculty saying if anybody needs counselors, they will be available. All right. So you guys just saw his arrest video. So now what is really chilling about this is when I finally saw the murder suspect of who killed these four people, I couldn't help but see a striking resemblance to Ted Bundy. And I noticed a lot of people are seeing the resemblance as well. But it goes one deeper. As I was researching, I'm like, you know, this guy wasn't a dummy. He was literally on Reddit asking questions and trying to do, you know, surveys to get into the mind of quote unquote killers. But this man, if you guys do not know, he was a Ph.D. student in the Department of Criminal Justice and Criminology at Washington State University. This was 300 miles away from Ted Bundy's alma mater, okay? Ted Bundy received his undergraduate from the University of Washington, where he was majoring in psychology before moving to law school at the University of Utah. Bundy also stalked and killed college students just like Brian did. And Brian started around the age of 28, which is around the time that people think that Ted Bundy also started stalking and killing people. One of the young ladies even talked about, you know, being stalked by somebody for weeks before her death. And she made a lot of TikTok videos. And I'm assuming that's where she assumed that the stalking was coming from, was somebody watching her videos. Even in one of her social media pics, you can see the white car that the police had been looking for for weeks um, in one of the backgrounds of the girl's pictures. I mean, that is creepy. This car, who I can only assume that Brian was in, was really stalking this group of young people, so much so that she was saying that she felt like she was being stalked. And as we know, Ted Bundy watched a lot of his victims like a hawk. He preyed upon them, found their weaknesses, found their vulnerabilities before he would strike. Now, what's very interesting is if you look at their mugshot in a side-by-side -side comparison, they both have a very similar hairstyle. Their eyebrows, they have thin lips, gaunt cheekbones, matching ears, but most importantly, they have those dead, soulless eyes. Even if you notice when he was getting his degree for criminology, the man does not smile. Who goes to school for damn near four years busting their ass to get a degree and not smile? You got high school students who coasted all through high school who get up there and do backflips. <laughs> this man didn't crack a smile. 
definitely giving me psychopathic, sociopathic vibes, okay? And what was also interesting is that this guy was not stupid. He was on the dean's list twice. Now, another really chilling thing is how he went on to Reddit and he made a post basically stating that he wanted basically asking questions about how crimes are committed and how victims are targeted and how somebody will leave a crime scene. Well, Ted Bundy also did something similar. When he was at college, he spent time as an assistant director of the Seattle Crime Prevention Advisory Commission in Olympia, Washington. And he even had the audacity to write a pamphlet for rape prevention that women could read and figure out how to prevent, you know, rape, even though he was out here raping women. You, you can't make this stuff up. The similarities are just very, very chilling between the two of them. But what's very disturbing is that, but what's most disturbing is that four young people lost their life needlessly. And I think at this point, now that the police have arrested him, they need to look and see if he has committed more murders in that vicinity. If there were more stabbings, more unsolved murders, because I definitely believe that he was the living embodiment or the modern day living embodiment of Ted Bundy. He was taking on the Ted Bundy persona. If you really study this in depth, you will see so many similarities outside of their looks. It is extremely chilling. So I don't want to make this video too long. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video. Feel free to share the video. And I'll talk to you guys later. Stay safe and stay vigilant. Happy New Year. Bye. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.